This video is for review quiz 2.8. This first problem says find the distance between these two points. The distance can be found easily with the distance formula. Distance formula being the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. This is really just the Pythagorean theorem um, on the plane. If I to graph these points, I get 0, negative 4 is going to be 1, 2, 3, negative 4 right there. And 5, 1 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1 there. This is the distance, and I can create a right triangle out of this. And here you can see that the distance is C, A, and B. A is just y2 x2 minus x1, b is y2 minus y1, and then we have our, um, our um, Pythagorean theorem that we can use to solve the um, third side of the triangle. Okay, so um, all I'm going to do is just going to plug these things into there. Uh, we, can, we can name either point whatever we want. It doesn't actually matter which one's y2, which one's y1, and x2, x1. Um, you'll, you'll get the same thing either way. So I'm going to name it like this, and then plug it in. So d equals uh, x2 minus x1 is 5 minus 0. And then y2 minus y1 is 1 minus negative 4. Squaring that, and then take the square root of all that. We get 5 squared plus uh, 5 squared. 25 plus 25. And then of course gives us 50, and the square root of 50, 50 is uh, 2 times 25, five is, uh, 25 is 5 times 5, we get a pair of 5s, and a 2 remains, so 5 goes on the outside, 2 goes on the inside, and there we go, we have our distance. The distance between the given points is 5 uh, square root 2. That's the exact distance, it doesn't give us a... Um, numerical distance so to find the numerical distance you just plug it into a calculator 5 times the square root of 2 gives you 7.0 7 7. and that's correct okay the next one is talking about midpoint midpoint is the, the 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 location of the very center so if you looked at this one you see that the midpoint is somewhere around here, just very, very center of that, that straight line between the two points. Really what you can think of this as is the average of the x's and the average of the y's. So if you can find the point that's the average between those places, that's, that's going to be the midpoint. And that's what the midpoint formula is. So the midpoint formula is the average of the x's. You add two numbers together, so you're going to divide by two and the average of the y's. Once again, two numbers added, so you divide by two. And it's a coordinate. It's gonna be in these parentheses with the, with the comma between. It's actually a point on the uh, Cartesian coordinate system. So once again, we can choose whichever one we want um, for x and y, or x1, y1, x2, or y2. Once again, it does not matter here. Um, let's see, x1, y1, x2, y2. I'm just choosing the first one to be the first point, so it's gonna be the second point. Okay, x1 gives you negative 9, negative 9 plus negative 4 over 2. And the next one gives you 9 plus 2 over 2. Negative 9 plus 4, plus a negative 4 is going to be negative 13 over 2. And then 9 plus 2 is 11 over 2. So this is a fraction. Let's just graph this, these points real quick and see if we're close. So we have negative 9, 9, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Negative 9, 9 goes right around there. Negative 4, 2, negative 4, up to 2, something like that. So between these two points, it looks like, I'm guessing right now, I'm guessing this point right here is the midpoint. 
Okay, let's find negative 13, 2. So negative 13 over 2, negative 13 over 2 is uh, negative 14 over 2 is 7. Negative 12 over 2 is negative 6. That's going to be negative 6.5. And then 11 over 2 is 5.5. So negative 6.5. This is negative 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Yep, it's going to be halfway through there. And then 5 over 5, see, this one's 5, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5.5 .5 is here. So that's, that's the midpoint. So I, I was slightly off, um, but that's because my my uh, graphing error. But that's, that's the midpoint there. So we can type it out. Negative 13 over 2, 11 over 2. You could probably write this either as a fraction or a um, decimal like I have here, but either way, that's the correct answer. Okay, for the last two problems, we're, we're going to be working with circles. And circles are really just the distance the, uh, the distance between a point, um, like some, some fixed point called the center, and um, you know however far the distance away from that is. And because we're in a two-dimensional plane, there's an infinite number of points, and they form a circle. That's what a circle really is. It's just a distance between, you know, from a point, from a fixed point. So the most important point of a circle really is the center and the distance uh, or the radius away from the center. That's the distance we're looking for. If you have those two pieces of information, a circle is quite easy to, to write as, a, as, a, um, as an equation. Here we're given the equation and we want to find this, these pieces of information from it. The way we do that is we use something called completion of the square. So we have x squared minus 8x plus y squared minus 20 equals 0. We're going to complete the two squares, the x squared and the y squared, and that's going to give us the information from it. The first thing you have to do is get all of the numbers, just the numbers, over to one side. You want the variables to be on the other side. Okay. Now I'm going to line up the x's and y's. We have x squared and then x. That's what we want. y squared is the only one for the y, so that one's fine. So this is actually already lined up the way I want it. Okay, now we can complete the uh, x squared portion. So it'll make sense when we get to the end. For now, just follow my follow me um, my process that I'm doing here and um, you'll see what, why we're doing this. So we're going to take the number in front of the x variable, negative 8. So we're going to negative 8, and we're going to divide it by 2, always the number 2. That gives you negative 4. Then we're going to take negative 4 and square it. This gives us positive 16. So this number, positive 16, we're going to add to both sides of the equation, and I'm going to add it right here. Um, in kind of nestled right right next to the uh, x term. What that does is it gives us this equation here. x squared minus 8x plus 16 plus y squared equals 20 plus 16 is 36. Okay, now we did this whole thing because this thing can, can uh, factor. You can actually factor it using the AC method, whatever you want to do. But you can actually uh, save yourself a whole step because it will always factor down into the variable x and then whatever this number is, minus 4 squared. And then the y squared is the same, 36. I'll show you that by expanding x minus 4. So we're, so we're looking for, um, let me do a different color here. We're looking for this thing in blue. If I take x minus 4 squared, this is just x minus 4 times x minus 4. x times x is x squared. x times negative 4. x uh, negative 4 times x. And then negative 4 times negative 4. That gives you x squared minus 8x plus 16. Negative 4 times negative 4 is positive 16. And that is the same thing in blue. So I've just proven that that uh, this thing factors down to this, which is a complete square. 
That's what we call this completion of the square. Um, and you'll notice that this one, uh, y squared, is already a complete squared. It's just something squared. There's no other y terms on the outside of it. Uh, that one's fine the way it is. So we don't have to do anything with y. But we got the x squared. Now, why do we do this? Let me uh, bring this down. I'm going to rewrite the y in a certain way. We have x minus 4 squared. And then I'm going to write y as y minus 0 squared equals 36. This is the standard form of a circle. The circle is going to be located at 4, 0. The 4 goes there, the 0 goes there. You'll note that we have, we have negative here. It's, it's going to be, um, I should say, x minus h squared plus y minus k squared. That's, that's the uh, center, h, k. h comma k is the center. And you have to have a minus. So if it was x plus 4 squared and y plus 0, then, well, y plus 0 doesn't make sense. But if it was x plus 4, you would have negative 4 be, be the inside thing. If it's positive, it's going to be negative. If it's negative, it's going to be positive. Um, that's a common thing in these types of equations, these types of formulas. Just keep that in mind. The last thing is the radius squared. 36, so this is the center. 36 is 6 squared. So the radius of our circle is 6 because the square root of 36 is, is that. So um, that's what, uh, how we read the circle. Um, you complete the square, and then you find the, the radius from the, whatever that one side is, and you're good to go. So the equation of, in standard form is x minus 4 squared. Plus, I'm just going to write y squared. Uh, you don't need to write y minus 0 squared. Just, just leave it as y squared. And 36. The center is going to be at 4, 0. The radius is 6. And now we can plot it. The center was at 4, 0. 4, 0 is right here. And 6 units away. So you can go whichever direction you want to go. We're just going to go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that's a radius of 6 units. Oops. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Yep. And you'll see that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. You, know, you can go 6 that way, 6 that way. In fact, this measures out a radius of 6 every single direction. That's what a circle does. Check it. And that's correct. OK, for this next one, it's a little bit more complex, but still the same idea. What is the uh, equation of the circle in standard form? And then we can find what's the center, what is the radius, and we can graph it from there. So we're still going to do completion of the square. That's the most important thing we're going to be doing. So the first step is going get, to get, um, get the number by itself over to the other side of the equation. And I'm going to rearrange this so the x's and the y's are together. So we're going to have x squared and then the minus x, and then y squared plus y squared, and then the plus 6y. OK, now I can follow the completion of the square process. So we're going to start with the x first. You see we have, we have negative x. That's the same thing as negative 1x. And the negative 1, we're going to divide by 2 to get negative 1 half and then square that number. Gives you 1 fourth. So 1 fourth, we're going to add, and add to both sides of the equation. OK, now we get x squared minus x plus 1 fourth plus y squared plus 6y. Um, negative 9 is the same thing as negative 9 over 1. Multiply by 4 over 4, giving us negative 36 over 1, or sorry, negative 36 over 4 plus 1 over 4, which gives you negative 35 over 4. All right, this thing can factor down into x minus 1 half. 
You can prove that to yourself by just expanding the x minus 1 half squared. And you'll see you, in fact, do get um, x, you get uh, uh, the, the, the thing in blue that I have written here. The x squared minus x plus 1 fourth. Okay, that's the first one. We still have to complete the square of the second one. So we have plus 6. 6 over 2 is 3. This thing we're going to square. Now that's what we're going to add and subtract to both sides, the 9. Make that 2 more apparent. Plus 6y plus 9 equals, and uh, 9 is 9 over 1, so we're going to multiply it by 4 over 4, giving us 36 over 4. So negative 35 over 4 plus 36 over 4 is 1 fourth. This thing here in green is going to be y plus 3 squared. Prove that to yourself if you need to. And there we go. We have completion of the square. So this one was a little bit longer. It's a little bit more um, work to do. That's what happens when you have fractions and that kind of thing. Um, but this is a typical completion of the square problem. Let's see, we're going to square that. Add that to y plus 3 squared equals 1 fourth. Okay, what's the center? The center is going to be at one half from the x uh, squared thing, and then negative three. It's y plus three, so we're gonna have minus three um, as a result, right? It's always the opposite of whatever uh, this sign is in here. So plus one half and minus three. The radius is the square root of one fourth, the square root of one over the square root of four, which is one half. So it's just half a unit away from the center. Now we can graph it. The center was at uh, positive one half and then negative three. So negative, yeah, 0 0.5, negative three. And we're only going to go one half unit away from that, which is right there. You can see this one's in half, half tick marks. So it's going to be negative 0 0.5, negative 1, negative 1.5, negative 2. And that's a, it's very small, very small circle right there. And that's correct.